Hello everyone, I got 5 jokes for you today. A man was driving home after attending a lively party when he suddenly found himself being pulled over by a police officer. He checked his rearview mirror and noticed the officer walking towards his vehicle. As the officer approached the driver's side window, he couldn't help but notice a large collection of knives in the back seat. With a stern expression, the officer asked, Sir, do you have a legitimate reason for possessing all those large knives? Grinning, the driver confidently replied, Yes I do. You see, I'm a professional juggler. The officer raised an eyebrow, clearly skeptical of the man's claim. Sensing the officer's doubt, the driver said, Officer, if you'll allow me, I'd be more than happy to give you a demonstration right here and now. Cautiously, the officer stepped back and said, All right, but this better be the truth. In no time, the man was out of his car, standing by the side of the road, expertly tossing the knives high into the air in a mesmerizing display. As this spectacle unfolded, two elderly men happened to drive by, and both couldn't help but stare in astonishment. One of the men turned to the other and exclaimed, I'm sure glad I gave up drinking a while back. The other man nodded in agreement and said, You're right, these sobriety tests are getting more and more ridiculous every day. Two hunters, Jim and Bob, decided to travel to Wisconsin during the winter season for some deer hunting. They were excited to experience the thrill of the hunt in the snowy wilderness. After tracking a large stag for miles, they finally got it in their sights and took it down with a well-placed shot. As they struggled, dragging the dead animal across the snowy open fields back to their pickup truck, they were stopped by a friendly conservation officer. He asked to see their hunting licenses and stamps, and after checking that everything was in order, the officer wished them a good day. However, before he left, he offered them some helpful advice. You know, if you guys would pull the deer from the front legs, instead of the back legs, the animal will glide more easily in the snow. This way, you won't be going against the grain of the fur. Jim and Bob thanked the officer for his suggestion and took his advice. They adjusted their grip on the deer and continued on their way. After about an hour of pulling the deer with much less effort, Jim said to Bob, that officer was a really nice guy, and pulling the deer this way is so much easier. Bob replied, yeah, he was friendly and all, but I don't think he was all that smart. Puzzled, Jim asked, why do you say that? Bob pointed out, well, we've been following his advice, and we're getting further and further away from the truck. A little old lady went to the grocery store and carefully selected the most expensive cat food she could find for her basket. She truly believed in providing nothing but the best for her beloved feline companion. Upon reaching the checkout counter, she proudly told the cashier, nothing but the best for my little kitten. The cashier hesitated and said, I'm sorry ma'am, but we cannot sell you cat food without proof that you have a cat. Some elderly people buy cat food to eat, and the management requires evidence that you are purchasing the cat food for your pet. Slightly annoyed, the little old lady went back home, picked up her cat, and returned to the store. They finally sold her the cat food. The next day, determined to pamper her dog as well, the little old lady went back to the store and bought 12 of the most expensive dog cookies available. This time, the cashier demanded proof that she had a dog, explaining that some older people occasionally eat dog food. Feeling even more frustrated, the old lady went home again, fetched her dog, and came back to the store. She was then allowed to purchase the dog cookies. The following day, the persistent old lady returned to the store, carrying a small box with a hole in the lid. She approached the same cashier and asked her to kindly stick her finger in the hole. The cautious cashier replied, Oh no, you might have a snake in there. The little old lady assured her there was nothing in the box that could harm her. Reluctantly, the cashier placed her finger into the box and pulled it out. She immediately noticed an unpleasant smell and exclaimed, That smells like crap. Grinning from ear to ear, the little old lady triumphantly said, That's right, now may I please purchase three rolls of toilet paper? A guy nervously walked into a rough and tough biker bar. He looked around, gathering his courage, and finally asked aloud, Excuse me, but does anyone here own that big Rottweiler tied up outside? 
A muscular biker, covered in tattoos, stood up and gruffly asked, Yeah, I do. What's it to you? The guy hesitated for a moment, then said, I'm really sorry, but I think my chihuahua just killed him. The biker shouted, What the hell are you talking about? How on earth could your puny chihuahua kill my powerful Rottweiler? The man replied, Well, he got stuck in your dog's throat. Two friends, John and Mark, were hiking through a dense forest, enjoying the sights and sounds of nature. They shared stories and laughed at each other's jokes while exploring the great outdoors. During their hike, they stumbled upon an enormous, deep hole hidden in the undergrowth. John peered into the mysterious hole and exclaimed, Wow, that looks incredibly deep. Mark agreed and suggested, Let's throw a few pebbles in there to see how deep it is. We'll be able to estimate the depth by how long it takes for the pebbles to hit the bottom. So, they collected a handful of small stones and tossed them into the seemingly bottomless hole. Eagerly, they listened for any sound, but heard nothing. John, surprised, remarked, Wow, that's really deep. I wasn't expecting that. I know, replied Mark. Let's try something bigger. How about those large rocks over there? They should definitely make some noise. The two friends picked up a couple of football-sized rocks and, with considerable effort, hurled them into the abyss. They waited again, anticipation growing, but once more, there was no sound. They looked at each other, utterly amazed by the depth of the hole. Then, John noticed something in the nearby bushes. Hey, he said with determination, there's a railroad tie over here. Help me carry it over. When we throw that massive thing in, it has to make some noise. Together, they dragged the heavy railroad tie to the edge of the hole and, with a synchronized heave, launched it into the darkness. Yet again, they were met with complete silence. Not a single sound came from the hole. As they were still trying to process what had just happened, a goat suddenly emerged from the surrounding forest, sprinting toward them at full speed. It charged past the two startled men and, without hesitating, leaped into the air and dove straight into the hole. John and Mark stared at each other, dumbfounded by the goat's bizarre behavior. As they were still trying to process what had just happened, a farmer emerged from the woods, looking somewhat concerned. He approached the two friends and asked, Hey, have you guys seen my goat around here? John, still in shock, replied, You bet we did. It was the craziest thing we've ever seen. Your goat came running like it was being chased by the devil himself, and just jumped headfirst into this hole. The farmer shook his head and said, Nah, that couldn't have been my goat. You see, my goat was chained to a railroad tie. 